Guys, I have my marketer slash ex-brand owner hat on today. And what I mean by that is that this video is going to be tapping into my experience working in marketing and advertising and hiring creators and influencers for these huge household names. But also I'm gonna be tapping into my experience actually owning brands and hiring influencers when I used to do that as well. So the point I'm trying to make is, this video is not me coming to you as a fellow influencer. This is me coming to you from a brand's point of view and using that experience I'm going to tell you the five things that you can do today that will help you on your journey to becoming an influencer so before we dive in don't forget to hit subscribe if you're new here I upload content like this every single week let's just dive in and get straight to the five things you should be doing to become an influencer in 2022 now these five things are actually in order so I need you to watch this consecutively and not jump around sorry if that came across super bossy but I am um, that is who I am, I'm a very bossy person. So <laughs> the first thing that I'm gonna need you to do is to improve your relationship with your current audience. Now, I want you to start with the audience that you already have because there's a big chance that you might already possess the audience you need to actually pitch and land deals with brands and get paid to share content. A lot of us tell ourselves that we have to wait until we reach 10K or 20K or whatever the number is, when in actual fact, you can work with brands when you have a far smaller following. The reason why you're able to do that is because you have a great relationship with your audience. Like that's what's key. From my perspective, I used to own two boutiques and I used to work with some creators and pay them who had a couple of thousand followers. And even though their audience might be seen as small by some people, they had the most incredible relationship with their audience. Like they, they had such a deep relationship with them that even though their audience wasn't necessarily in the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, I was still getting amazing results by partnering with them because their relationship with their audience was so strong, okay? So what do I mean when I say work on your relationship with your audience? Well, what I'm referring to is the dialogue that you have with your audience. Do you have an audience who comment on your photos very often or videos? Does your audience DM you? Do they watch your story content? If so, these are all signals that your audience are pretty engaged and you potentially have a good relationship with them. You wanna leverage this, right? So when people comment on your photos, you wanna respond. When people send you DMs, you wanna open up a conversation. Don't just say thanks, but get a conversation going. Actually treat your audience like they are your friends. That's how you should be treating them. They're part of your community. And when you deepen your relationship with your audience in that way, way when the time comes that you're working with brands and or you're releasing your own product or whatever it is that you want to do as an influencer you'll notice that whatever you're doing will be a lot more successful if you have a good relationship with your audience and there's a really simple reason why and it's something called no like and trust you've probably heard that before, right? When you build know, like, and trust with your audience, you are setting yourself up for incredible success as an influencer. I'm gonna use two influencers as examples. Now, these are really big influencers, don't get me wrong, but the reason why I wanna reference them is because they're such great examples of influencers who have such a connection with their audience that they're able to achieve things that influencers who are four times their size would never be able to achieve, right? The first is Nella Rose, one of my favorites. Nella Rose has such an amazing relationship with her audience to the point where I will see a post shared about her by someone else and all of the comments will just be incredibly com complimentary like all the comments will just be like I love this for her I love Nella Rose sometimes I'll see posts shared by like gossip accounts will have nothing to do with her and people will still bring up Nella Rose because people love her myself included she has a great relationship with her audience another example is someone who I wasn't even aware of and maybe that's embarrassing to say but I did even I've never heard of her until recently Matilda Jerf I think her name is I heard about her on a podcast she has millions of followers do not get me wrong she has maybe about two million on Instagram I think about one million on TikTok so she's a big creator however she has managed to create a clothing brand which makes over 20 million dollars a year now, the reason why I wanna use her as an example, right? Yes, she has millions of followers, right? That very rarely equates to having a business what makes that much money. It very, believe it or not, it very rarely equates to having a business what makes that much money. Her influence supersedes her size of following. She has the kind of influence that someone who has 10 million or even 20 million followers would be expected to have. And that again is because both of these lovely ladies are such great examples of people who have such a good relationship with their audience. They have a dialogue with their audience. When they create content, they create it like they're speaking directly to their audience. And that is super, super powerful. So that's the first thing that I'm gonna want you to do is to work on that 
relationship with your current audience. The second thing I need you to do is to improve the quality of your content. And this is applicable to everyone. It doesn't matter if your content is already amazing, it can always be improved upon, right? The reason why I want you to do this is because the best way for you to grow on any social media platform, so not even just talking about Instagram here, is to create better content. And a lot of the time we look for other ways to grow. We want the hacks, right? We're like, okay, if I just do this for five minutes every day, then I'll grow. And the hacks and the tactics will work to an extent, but what will help you grow quicker is better content. That is what's gonna help you grow quickly and efficiently, right? So the second thing I want you to do is to improve on your content content and how I want you to do this is by making a commitment to make micro improvements to every single post that you share. So every time you create a reel or a post or a YouTube video or a TikTok, I want you to look at your previous post and ask yourself, how can I make this one better? Can you do your captions slightly differently? Can you have different bits on the screen making it more exciting? Can you edit it in a slightly different way? Can you shoot it on a different camera so it's higher quality? Can you spend more time on your caption so it's more engaging? What can you do what's going to help make that post a tiny bit better than the one before it. If we commit ourselves to doing this every single time we post, we will very, very quickly start creating super high quality content and that is what's gonna lead us to experiencing huge, huge growth. So the next thing I want you to do is focus on defining your personal brand. Now, this probably sounds like a huge piece of work and that's not what I want you to do. I simply want you to sit down and to write down answers to a few different questions. So the first question I want you to write down your answer to is who is my audience? Now, this this question is basically going to replace the usual question of what's your niche? I'm not going to focus on niches, right? Instead, I want you to think about who your audience is, right? Now, when you're answering this question, I want you to think about the type of content that your audience are in and also what you think your audience look to when it comes to recommendations. Now, this will end up potentially answering the question, what is your niche? Because you might find that actually your audience are super interested in fitness content and that's what they look to you for. So maybe that's what your niche is. If you're someone who doesn't have a niche or you don't want a niche, you still need to have a very good idea of who your audience are. In fact, you probably need an even better idea of who your audience are than someone else who does have a niche. Here's why. If you don't have a niche, you need to know that you are still targeting one specific audience. You cannot have an account which is trying to speak to everyone because if you're trying to speak to everyone, you are actually speaking to no one. So you might be someone who doesn't have a specific niche. Like I know a creator who's very successful and she talks about anything and everything. The difference with her though is that she knows who her audience is. So she knows that her audience are young women living in the UK who are interested in X, Y, Z. So even though she might not have one specific niche, she still knows who her audience are and what they're interested in, right? So this is really important because when it comes to you pitching to brands, you need to know that the brands you're pitching to are aligned with your audience. If they're not aligned, then it won't work. So if I was gonna pitch to a brand who are trying to target 70 year old men who are interested in mattresses, very niche, that wouldn't work for me because I know that my audience aren't 70 year old men and I also know that they're not interested in mattresses. Well, some of you might be, but you know what I'm saying, right? So that's the first thing that you need to figure out when it comes to your personal brand. Next thing you wanna do is take this one step further and not only know what it is that you create content about and who your audience are, but also try and establish your special source to that. So there'll be other creators who are targeting a similar audience or who talk about similar subjects, but those creators aren't you. So what is it about you what helps you stand out from everyone else? Do you have a specific opinion on fitness if that's what you create content about, right? Do you have certain quirks to your personality what you wanna make sure that you demonstrate? Like what is it about you that makes you stand out from the other influencers within your niche. For example, for me and my personal brand, my thing what stands me out is that I'm very like realistic. So when I'm working with people, I'm not gonna sit here and be like, you have to post four times a day, otherwise you're never gonna grow. Like I'm more of a realistic, obviously you're, you're not gonna be able to post that much. Obviously sometimes you're not gonna be as consistent as you want to be. Like let's talk about how we make things work within your actual lifestyle. Like that's kind of my point of differentiation in addition to my personality. Why am I doing this? Like personality isn't a real thing. In addition to my personality. So figure out what it is for you which will help you stand out. Step four, congratulations for getting this far. I want you to now test your ability to sell. This is, a, this is an exciting one, right? Essentially, when you work with brands, the reason why they want to work with you as an influencer is because they are trying to get in front of your audience. Most of the time, they're trying to get in front of your audience because they want your audience to buy their product, okay? So they're essentially working with you because they're trying to sell something. If you can test your ability to sell a brand's product before you even pitch to them, before you even start working with brands, it's gonna make your pitch a lot more effective. 
effective. So let me explain to you how you can do this. The most lucrative way is to engage in affiliate marketing. And affiliate marketing is essentially when you promote a brand's product or services using your own bespoke link. And when someone buys that product using your link, you earn a commission of that sale. So in my description link below, you're gonna see a bunch of affiliate links. I have affiliate links for some of the tools that I use and I have affiliate links for all of my equipment. So if you watch this video and thought, oh, I quite like the camera quality, maybe I'll buy Jade's camera, you can go to the description of my video, click on that link, what's next to my camera name, you could buy my camera and I would earn a percentage of that sale. Now, the way that I want you to use affiliate marketing in this sense, in regards to your journey to becoming an influencer, is to simply look for products or services that you can promote in your content which feel authentic and native to you so ideally these are products that you already use think about things that you could promote using an affiliate link and if you're not sure how to figure out if you can use affiliate links for certain products a simple google search will show you just head to google type in whatever product it is and then type in affiliate program right and then you'll get all the information you need there but essentially when you start doing that and you start promoting some of these products that you already use you will be able to see how many people click on your links but also how many people buy those products based off of your recommendation this is really useful data because if you find that you're getting a lot of clicks and maybe you're getting a lot of sales that's really great data for you to use in your pitches it's a great opportunity for you to say you know I do currently have an affiliate link for a similar product and I get a hundred clicks a month on that link or you know I got four sales of that product last week that's a really great way for you to use it but but also it helps you define your worth and figure out what your rates are because this data is showing you how effective your promotions are right it's also showing you how much your audience know like and trust you because if you completed step one hopefully by step four you're going to get a lot of people buying products for your affiliate links it also means if you do it this way that you're actually able to earn a commission so all of this work isn't going to waste because you will earn a small amount of money for every sale that you make another way for you to do this if you don't want to go down the affiliate link is to quite simply create content which looks like a sponsored post where you're promoting a brand and ask the brand if they received any sales or increased web traffic as a result of it that's a lot harder for you to do it's harder for the brand to track you don't know if the brand's going to respond to you but it still gives you a great case study for you to use and refer to in your pitches so it's completely up to you which route you want to take step five we've arrived at step five guys how exciting now what you need to do is pitch you cannot and should not be waiting for brands to come to you you need to roll up your sleeves and you need to go to them especially when you're in the early stages of your journey because you'll find that most of the brands who come to you will either be like the scammy brands who dm you or leave all those annoying comments or there'll be legitimate brands who do not have budget to pay you. And the reason why is because it's actually a lot more likely for a brand to get a small creator to work with them on a gifted basis than it would for them to get a big creator, right? So that's why when you're smaller, you get a lot of brands who wanna work with you for free, which is another reason why you need to roll up your sleeves and start pitching. Because if you want to get out there and actually get paid for your content and for your work, and if you've completed all of those other steps, so you've got an engaged audience, your content's great, your personal brand is defined and you've got evidence that you can actually sell products and services you should be getting paid for your work so you need to be pitching to brands and asking them to pay you i actually have pitch templates that you can access instantly they are amazing i recently updated them and they work for me on such an amazing level so if you want to access them instantly in addition to loads of masterclasses resources live q a's etc you can join my membership the creators club a link is in the description so that is it i hope you found it useful if you feel like hanging around i recommend watching this video it's all about my top tips for becoming a full-time content creator thank you so much for watching as always i'll see you in my next video